Earlier this morning, Meredith brought us the story of an amazing bond between a lion and the two men who cared for him when he was just a cub. Take a look. In late 2007, this video was posted on YouTube and became an international sensation. A lion cub named Christian, purchased from a London department store in 1969 by two friends who raised him until he grew too big for the city. Against the odds, he was introduced and integrated into the African wild. A year after they parted ways, Christian's original owners, Ace Burke and John Rendell, traveled to Africa to see their former pet. Unsure of what to expect, this is the greeting they received. Rendell say their deep connection with the lion they raised gave their lives a sense of purpose that they hadn't previously felt. One year after the now famous reunion, the men returned to Africa for a second visit. The results were equally as touching. Christian was larger and more self-assured, but he was no less loving with the men who worked tirelessly to give him the best life they could. This would be the last time Burke and Rendell would see Christian, but the inspiring story of this unlikely bond lives on today. Ace Burke and John Rendell are the authors of A Lion Called Christian, the true story of the remarkable bond between two friends and a lion, along with a children's version, Christian the Lion. Good morning to you both. Hi. I can't help but get teary-eyed when I see that footage, and I know that everyone else does as well. You know, when I watch it and I see him run up and hug you, I mean, he's got his arms wrapped around you guys. How did you not fall over? Look yes. at this beast jumping all over you. <laughs> he was moving at quite a speed by the time he reached <laughs> us. And I think if probably if we weren't standing beside each other, we might have taken one of us individually over. But, but you're holding Ace him up there. Looking, looking and we were used to it, although he was much bigger than we'd seen him. We, we were prepared for it in a sense. You know, let's be clear too, as, as touching as this footage is when you see it, you say that you would never do this again and that you also realize that it, it really encourages trafficking of wild animals. Tell me about that. Um, no, well it absolutely does, no. doesn't it? And uh, in 1973 it's been illegal since then to um, have animals like that and we are very much against it. We were very lucky. You know, we, he was a wonderful lion, he had a wonderful nature, he was very loving. We had him in a very safe environment. We looked after him very well. And uh, the result was that he was able to be ha um, rehabilitated in the mm -hmm. end. And George Adamson actually wrote that ironically, of all the lions he'd rehabilitated, Christian was the easiest. And we hadn't de-lionized him. And we felt very lucky that it had gone as well as it had because mm -hmm. it was potentially a dangerous situation for us and the people around us. But I wonder, um, tell me a little bit about home life with Christian mm -hmm. when you first brought him home. What was that like? I mean, you have a pet lion. <laughs> well, there's no lion manual. But <laughs> it's like any, any pet, you sort of play it by ear. <laughs> and we had to be very clever and one step ahead of him. Um, we never let him know when he was actually physically stronger than us and with very sharp teeth and claws. Mm -hmm. um, even when young, he was you know, capable of inflicting a lot of damage. But he was great fun to be with, wasn't he? Yes. And very cooperative and we were mm -hmm. like his pride, pride in a sense. So and he had a routine, you see, he had a very fixed routine. So he was fed four times a day. He was exercised every afternoon in the garden, which in fact was a graveyard. Mm -hmm. But um, and he had a friend, his best friend Unity, who used to come and play with him in the afternoon. And so he had a stable, if unusual, life. I wonder. The other thing that was interesting in the book is you talk about the fact that they're kind of like dogs. They're not like other mm. cats. Tell me about that. Well, they're quite yeah. friendly and gregarious, unlike all the other cat families. Mm. So we were part of his his family. So that made it much easier. So he was open yeah. to us and other people being mm -hmm. in his life. And the cruelest thing you can do to a lion is to have it by itself. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, you know, tigers and leopards are quite self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. They're not very interested in other tigers or leopards. Whereas a lion, 
if there aren't other lions around, he will adopt whoever is around him. And there's stories of di lions and dogs and all kinds of odd combinations mm -hmm. forming great friendships. So we became his pride and the friends that we worked and lived with were part of it as well. Well, I have to say, when I see him wrap his arms around you like that, my German <laughs> Shepherd does that. And it's a beautiful <laughs> feeling, but I know that we are all envious that you get those big lion hugs. And I, I heard so many people say, I would give anything to get one of those. So <laughs> well, you're very big, lucky. Uh, that big greeting you get from your German Shepherd. If you imagine that just you know, amplified. Yeah, well, I'm going to go get a hug from him later. Thank but you guys so much. But it's so still much. just as loving. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right, again, the book is called A Line Called Christian. Ace Burke and John Rendell, thank you guys so much. Coming up next.